This is the King Rune KP3S Pro V2 3D printer. It's a budget and compact machine with clipper installed that has printing speeds of up to 350mm per second. Taking a look around the printer, it has a solid build with a metal base that has all the electronics neatly enclosed. The Z-axis is built upon an aluminium profile that's securely attached to the base with bolts. And at the top we've got a spool holder attached. The KP3S Pro V2 has linear rails used on all three axes, keeping things rigid for smoother and faster printing. The available print volume is 200 by 200 by 200 millimeters, which is good for smaller size prototypes and models. The bed heats up to 100 degrees and it comes with a dual sided magnetic PEI build surface. There's no leveling knobs on the underside of the bed and the printer uses an inductive sensor for hands-free auto bed leveling. The X and Y axis are driven with separate stepper motors and belts and these have handy adjustment knobs which allow for quickly adjusting the belt tension. The print head contains the 9.5 to 1 geared extruder that's driven by a small pancake stepper motor. Filament goes into the hot end with a ceramic heater and into a 0.4mm hardened steel nozzle that reaches temperatures of 260 degrees, making it suitable for printing basic materials like PLA or TPU. An updated cooling fan now allows speed adjustment and there's a cooling duct for cooling down freshly printed layers. Built in, there's also a module for vibration compensation and we've got the proximity sensor for the bed leveling. At the front of the printer, there's a 1.28 inch LCD display with a knob for adjusting and controlling the printer. The small screen and knob feel a bit outdated and a touch screen would be a welcome addition. The printer supports numerous ways of printing, either via USB, Ethernet or Wi-Fi. More on the Wi-Fi set up later. There's a range of different ports on the front with a USB-C, microSD and what appears to be a HDMI port. And at the side there's three USB ports and an Ethernet port. The power cable and switch are located on the side towards the front for easy access. And finally all the cables are attached to the bed, hot end and stepper motors are all neatly routed and managed. Opening the box we find the user manual for setting up the printer, there's the PEI build sheet and under the protective foam the printer comes pre-assembled in two main parts. It's all well packaged and is almost ready to go. Along with the printer there's also a small sample of white PLA, the power cable, the spool holder which mounts to the top of the printer, We've got the Z-axis lead screw which is well protected inside a plastic container. And we also have an accessory box with the unclogging tool, the LCD display that connects to the front of the printer, a USB-C cable, there's a selection of Allen keys and spanners, and there's also a spare 0.4mm hardened steel nozzle. There's a USB drive that contains the instructions and slicing software, an EMMC adapter, an assortment of bolts for assembly, and lastly a pair of side cutters. The assembly is a straightforward process, beginning with the upright with the hot end attached. It's placed into the base of the printer. And then this is bolted and secured from the back and from the underside. A few more bolts are installed from the top with T-slot nuts, and these are a bit more challenging to align and install. Next up the lead screw is installed and the clamp is tightened to keep it in place. The spool holder bracket is installed to the top of the Z-axis and this has a small bearing to support the lead screw. The spool holder is attached and screwed onto the bracket. At the front the screen is connected to the cable and then it's placed into the slots and pressed into place. At the side of the printer there's two cables to plug in for the hot end and the X-axis. And before turning on the printer, check the power supply is set to the correct voltage, then plug in the power cable and turn on the printer. Now the boot time on the printer is quite slow and it takes about 50 seconds to get into the menu. The on-screen display is controlled by a push button encoder dial and the menu is displayed and the control with the dial feels a bit dated. Turning the dial seems unintuitive with it turning clockwise moving the selection up the menu and turning it anti-clockwise to scroll down the menu. I feel it would be better suited to control if it was reversed. 
Next for the setup, the Z offset is adjusted and set. Along with the auto bed level, and the input shaper for the vibration compensation is carried out. For the test prints we're using Corality's Hyper PLA filament, and to get started we just need to preheat the hot end from the menu, and load some filament into the extruder. For the first print we're starting off with the included pre-sliced benchy that is stored on the onboard memory. It's a good first test print to check everything is working correctly. The printer runs smoothly and quietly with the silent stepper drivers, although the cooling fans are on the louder side. The finished model took 29 minutes to print and once it was complete, the build surface is lifted off the bed and as the surface cools the model is easy to remove. The finished model printed well and looks clean, only with some slight bulging on the sharp corners. Now to use the printer over Wi-Fi, you need to open the config file found on the USB drive then add your Wi-Fi network and password details. With this information filled in, the USB drive is plugged back into the printer and it's restarted. Once the printer updates, you can access and control the printer through the Fluid Web Interface. Moving on to the software, you'll need to install the included Cura slicing software that's found on the USB drive. And then to be able to add the printer's profile in the software, Four individual files need to be manually copied from the USB drive into four different folders to where the software installation is located. Now while there are instructions included on how to set up the Wi-Fi and the slicer software, I think it needs to be an easier, simplified process, especially for beginners. With the slicer set up, we can prepare and slice more files for printing. Files are added to the slicer, and from here we can adjust the settings then either send to the printer over Wi-Fi with a fluid web interface, or save slice files on a USB drive for printing. A fidget puzzle is the next item being printed, and it's being printed at the default print speed of 350mm per second with the Hyper PLA. Taking a look at the finished model, the outer edges aren't perfectly straight and have a wavy defect visible along the edges and the overall print quality isn't that great. Apart from this, the tolerances are good and the item freed up and moved as intended. The next test print is of a rocket printed at 150mm per second, and this took 20 minutes to complete, printed with a 0.2mm layer height with the red PLA filament. The finished print had some visible defects on the body and some wavy ringing on the fins. Next up we're printing a geometric pot in vase mode. This is printed with a 0.2mm layer height with a 0.4mm wall thickness. It's printed with red hyper PLA with a default printing speed of 150mm per second. The model took a total of 30 minutes to complete and again the print quality of the finished model is showing defects with a bumpy surface finish which is less than ideal. To try and resolve the issue, the model was reprinted with slower speed, firstly at 100mm per second, which was still showing the defects in the surface finish. Then the speed was lowered down to 50mm per second, at which we started to see some improvements in the print quality. And the best results were seen at printing even slower at 25mm per second. The King Rune KP3S Pro V2 is a decent little printer spec-wise that's easy to assemble and it's well built. It's got some good features such as linear rails, auto bed level and clipper installed. The initial tests out of the box showed the print quality was average when printing at the quicker default speeds. Lowering the print speed did show some improvement, but the printer and software still need further tuning for best results. The on-screen display and controls feel a bit outdated, but that's less of a concern if you're using it over Wi-Fi with the fluid web interface. Setting up the web interface and slicing software isn't difficult, but it needs to be an easier process with less steps for beginners to improve the outer box experience. 
Overall, after these tests, I think this printer has missed the mark as a fast budget clipper 3D printer, and there's better options available for beginners.